Good afternoon folks, welcome back to Higher Chemistry. We're going to have a look in the next series of videos on the different types of mole calculations. Um, I'll put this document here, I'll put a link in the description to my compiled um, types of mole calculation here. The good news is some of these have been done by me in previous videos so they don't even need to be talked about here. Um, and the other ones will run through. I'm actually going to start with this one here. So this is going to be number one, one of the trickiest um, excess questions. Uh, can be applied to two different situations. Uh, so let's have a look at excess questions. Sometimes the questions will ask you to calculate the excess reactant, or reagent actually is the phrase they often use. Reagent is an old fancy chemical term for chemist chemical. <laughs> um, or they'll ask you to calculate the limiting chemical. Now what's this excess about? Uh, and it's talking about the fact that in most chemistry reactions, in fact, sometimes you want this to happen, you will accidentally or intentionally add more of one chemical than you actually need to react all of the other chemical. Now, what that means is that one of the two chemicals will be completely reacted. And when that is all reacted, it's the end of the game. The reaction stops. So that is called your limiting reagent. When you've burned all of this up, it's the end of the reaction. Now, but that also means that you'll have some of the other chemical left over, and that's called the excess reagent or excess chemical. So that's what's going on with these calculations, folks. Um, you can be asked about either of these. In recent years, in the multiple choice, they tend to focus on excess, I think. And certainly in the written, I've seen this phrase more often than I've ever seen it before. Uh, they can apply to two different situations, solids and solutions, and they can apply to gases um, reacting with each other. This one's actually easier, so let's tackle the slightly trickier, perhaps, one first. And we'll come back to gases at the end. The, I'm going to show you a technique for gases where you don't need to faff around with the molar volume. Um, which is grand. So here we go, folks. These are typical uh, written question. We've got one gram of magnesium is reacted with 100 centimetres cubed of one mole per litre hydrochloric acid. Calculate which is the limiting reagent. The first thing we need to do is get ourselves a balanced equation. Once you've got the balanced equation, you can discard all the other things except the chemicals you're interested in. So junk anything you don't need to worry about, pay attention to the things you do. The second stage of this chemical process is we are going to turn um, both uh, reactants into moles. Now, I don't do this very often um, in my mole calculations, oddly enough, because I usually use proportion. Um, but because you're dealing with two very different types of data, as we're about to see, it's easier, in fact, it's the only way to do a, a direct comparison, is to turn both your reactants into a number of moles. Uh, and then, the third and last stage is to work out uh, which one is all used up, in this case, because it's the limiting reagent. In fact, for all cases, you can work out which one is all used up, and then if the question asks you to say the excess reagent is simply the other chemical to the one that's all used up. So, uh, this should be a fairly universal technique. Let me save you watching me writing out an equation by doing this. We've got magnesium plus two hydrochloric acids makes magnesium chloride and H2. Now, the types of data we are given in this question, um, ladies and gentlemen, is that is a mass of magnesium. And we also have got uh, a volume and a concentration of hydrochloric acid. So, um, let's proceed with the balance equation. Discard, nope. It's not asking or telling you anything about that or that, not in this question. So we're only interested in these two. And that, as we can see, is a one to two moles reaction. These are moles, not grams or volumes or anything like that. These are only moles. So let's go ahead with stage two, which is to turn both our reactants into moles. Let's do the solid in green, and let's do the solution in brown. Moles is mass over GFM. It's not very often I use that triangle, um, but we are gonna have to use it this time. So moles of magnesium uh, is equal to 1 over 24. I think it's 24.1, but close enough for government work. Uh, and in brown, 
we are going to uh, do the solution. Now, don't be tempted to try and do that. That's, that's a volume, not a mass. Look at the type of data. That is a volume, that's a concentration. So for the solution, we're going to say moles of HCl, that equals concentration times volume. And this is in centimeters cubed. You've got to have it in liters. How annoying is that? So that's going to be 0 0.1 liters times, just divide it by 1,000, of course, um, times a 1. That's an easy calculation. Um, 0 0.1. Let me get the oldest calculator in the world. Uh, actually, it's certainly the oldest calculator probably in Melbourne. Um, older than many of the staff, it must be said, 1994. So um, let's do this. Uh, so that is 1 over 24, uh, giving us uh, 0 0.04167. Let's not round too early for the sake of accuracy. Let's keep at least four significant figures here. Get your colour right, hey. So uh, we've got 0 0.04167 moles. Um, now... Let's have a look at what we actually do now. Work out which of these two chemicals is entirely being used up. Now we need to go back to our mole ratio here, folks, in order to do stage three. Um, in order to do stage three, we need to realize that one mole of this requires two moles of this to react all of that. So what I say to my folks is I say to pick either of these two numbers and see if you have enough of the other chemical to use up all of the number that you picked. Let me show you what I mean by that. For example, um, if you were to say, oh, okay, let's pick the hydrochloric acid. Now, we've got 0 0.1, um, and what we would say is if we wanted to react all of that, can we react all of the 0 0.1, we would require 0 0.05, of course, because we're going that way, so we divide it by half. So if we wanted to burn up all of this, we would need 0 0.05 of the magnesium. And then we ask ourselves a question. Do we have enough magnesium? Do we have 0 0.05? No, we don't. So the original question I asked myself is, can we use up all of this? And the answer is no, you cannot. And at this point in time, I'm hoping you'll have realized that we have just worked out that the hydrochloric acid is excess, because that was my definition earlier on. The excess chemical is the one that there is some left of. And we cannot use it all up, no. Therefore, hydrochloric acid is actually the excess chemical. And believe it or not, you've just got all the marks by, by proving automatically that we can't use all of this, so this must all be used, and this, in fact, is our limiting chemical. You're done. Now, people say to me at this point, hold the bus, hey. What happens if you'd gone the other... What happens... Because I'd randomly just pick this one. What happens if you pick this one? So let's try that. So we will ask ourselves the same question. Can we use all of this? Uh, and we go back to the mole ratio. So let's just delete that. Let's pretend we didn't use these so they don't confuse us. And we'll stick with the green. I might put the green up here if you don't mind, just for clarity. So I would say, well, this is magnesium, so we would say 0 0.041667 is there. Sorry about the pens. And then I'd work out how many moles would be here. So let's do that, 0 0.041667 times 2. Um, so same question. If we wanted to use all of this, how much of the hydrochloric acid would we need? And the answer according to the calculator, which you may or may not be able to see there, is we would require 0 0.0833. And last time I said, do we have enough of the hydrochloric acid? Let's have a look. Covering up that, of course. Yes, we do. We have enough to use all of this. We have enough of the hydrochloric acid, my apologies, to use all of the magnesium. Therefore, magnesium all gets reacted and it is the limiting reagent, which is exactly what we said just by going the other approach. So both of these will agree that this guy here is the limiting reagent. It will all be burned up, either because you picked this number to start with and found, oh yeah, you can use it all up, or because you picked this number and said, oh no, you can't use all that up. That means this 
is all burned up. Either of these can be written in an exam question and to get you all of the marks you have proven. That's what they often say, prove by calculation or show by calculation. And that's what we just did. Excellent. I just thought I'd throw a living nightmare of a multiple choice question, which is based on excess calculations, very similar to what we were just tackling here. Uh, it's sort of the worst case scenario that I've seen, to be honest. This is a ridiculous amount of work for one mark. And as a, as a demonstration of exam technique, there is no way on earth you should be trying to tackle this first day around. Skip it, come back to it at the end when you have some more time. So let's have a look at what we've got here. Do I, can I zoom in a bit? Uh, come on, camera, you're going to be nice. Oops, a bit to camera, thank you. Um, so magnesium carbonate reacts with the nitric acid. They've given you the balanced equation. Uh, and I'll just pencil in the numbers here. It is one to two. Now, normally, that's all you'd be interested in. And you would stop because they react. You, the question's almost always reacting, asking about reactants, sorry. But have a look at this, though. 0 0.05 moles of magnesium carbonate. Okay, that's that. Is added to a solution containing 0 0.06. Oh, it even looks nice. Look. They've given you moles. They're pretending to be friendly. You don't even have to do a calculation, a conversion for grams or volumes. Oh, this is going to be a piece of cake. Only it's not. Because if we have a look at this, now they're asking about the products. So they're interested in this. So that's a ratio of one mole. And they're also asking about magnesium nitrate, which is also one mole. Uh, and then they've switched back to the reactants being excess or nitric acid being excess. Right, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put the time in on this one because, as I said, it is a nightmare. Let's figure out how to go about this. <laughs> the only one they haven't asked about is the water. So let's wipe that. Now they're saying that you have added 0 0.05 moles of magnesium carbonate to 0 0.06 moles of nitric acid. Basically, guys, what you're going to have to do is figure out which of these two is the limiting reactant. Because as soon as you work out which one actually gets burned up first, then we can look at the ratio of whichever one it is to these two. And it'll tell you how many moles of the other one you're going to make. Do you see what I mean in just a second? So let's take these numbers down here. One to two. Uh, now, 0 0.05. Again, let's pick a random one. What, what, if this was the class, I'd say, which one would you like to use? Let's use this one. Okay, let's use this one. Why not? So um, 0 0.06 of the nitric acid, that's that. Um, ask ourselves, can we use all of this up? Well, how much would we need to have of the magnesium carbonate? It's a 2 to 1 ratio. So that means if you got 0 0.06, you would need 0 0.03. So again, we'll ask ourselves the question, can we use it all? Uh, and the answer is, do we have enough of the magnesium carbonate to use all of this nitric acid up? We require 0 0.03 and we've actually got 0 0.05. So the answer to that is yes, we can actually burn up all the nitric acid. So this is the limiting chemical. That means all of that will be burned. Now let's go back to the green numbers here because the actual numbers, I'm trying to see I'm not off the top of the sheet here. No, I'm not good. Let me zoom back out again. Um, so if it's 1 to 2 to 1 to 1 and we've actually got 0 0.06, of this, we can fill in, that is unsure, isn't it? Yes, it is, sorry. Amateur cameraman here. We can fill in the numbers of all these other ones that we're actually going to either react, in the case of this guy, or we're going to make, in the case of these two chemicals. So we're going to react 0 0.06 with 0 0.03, and we're going to make 0 0.03, and 0 0.03. In case you're wondering where I magically pull these numbers here from, it's because the ratio is 2 to 1. So that becomes that. Let's look at the answers, see if any of them are helpful. 0 0.05 moles of carbon dioxide. Nope. 0 0.06 moles of magnesium nitrate. Nope. <laughs> I actually haven't cheated in this, so this is going to be embarrassing I've done this question wrong. I don't think so, though. Let's have a look. Magnesium carbonate is excess by 0 0.02. Ah, that looks promising. 0 0.05 is what you've got. 0 0.03 is what you use. So that one should be right. We don't stop until we check them all, though. Nitric acid is excess? No, it's definitely not, because we're using it all up. It's the limiting chemical. Boom. There you go.
That's sort of, as I said, the worst case scenario. I think I'll do a separate video for excess questions to do with gas calculations. So this, uh, short and sweet, let's keep it uh, what we're going to talk about today, guys. So we're going to talk about excess calculations, uh, and we dealt with solids and solutions today. I have seen questions where it's been solids and liquids. Uh, in fact, do I have one here that I want to do with you? Yes, I do, in fact. Let's not leave this one quite behind. We'll come back to gases in a different one because they play in a different set of rules. Um, so, in a lab... Again, let me zoom in for a wee second. Downside of using your phone. There we go. So, in a lab experiment, a student used 5 grams... Oh, let's take this down so you can see the actual equation. So, here's the equation here, guys. Benzoic acid, whatever that is. Don't worry. Don't care what it is. They, oh, look, they've even given the GFM. How nice. So benzoic acid reacts with that chemical there. Now this one you should know. If, by the way, see if you even have to think um, for a second, you don't know your stuff well enough. It's OH, so it's alcohols, it's one carbon, that is methanol. If you don't know it, go and learn it. GFM and methanol. Um, and this is an ester. You should know that as well from the name. Methyl benzoate. Uh, and it's GFM as well. Uh, we'll come back to what, that's another time, not in this video, what X is. Let's have a look at the actual numbers though. Uh, in the lab experiment, a student used 5 grams of this and 2.5 grams of this to produce methyl benzoate. Explain why benzoic acid is the limiting reactant. Oh, they're using reactant rather than reagent. Okay, fair enough. You must include calculations in your answers. It's to stop you guessing, of course. Uh, right. Now, this is an interesting one because they're actually both grams here. So, I'm tempted to show you a quick way of doing this. And I can show you the more rigorous way of sticking with what we did last time. Because the rules for last time were to turn them both into moles. Um, so, we really should strictly do that. Let's do that. So, 5 grams um, of benzoic acid. So, that's the mass 5 over the GFM, which is 122 um, and also for the methanol, um, we have got um, 2.5 grams of methanol over 32. Let's get the numbers for that. Okay, I've taken the liberty of rounding a little bit here. Um, let's have a look, because this one's actually a very straightforward two marks, if you understand how it works. So this is the number of moles of benzoic acid, and this is the number of moles of methanol. And if you have a look here, it is one to one uh, ratio. So therefore, once again, we don't even need to pick one of these two, but I mean, common sense, if you pick this one, can you use all of this up? Well, you would require the same number of moles. You require 0 0.041 of this chemical, and uh, we can crystal clear see that we'll get way more than 0 0.041. If we'd done it the other way around, can we use all of this? We'd require 0 0.078. No, we don't have it, therefore we can't use all of that. This is there for excess, and that is limiting. Or, of course, the first way I did it, which was that way, we have enough of this to use all of that chemical up. That is the limiting chemical. Quite easy to marks, actually. Unusual this way. If you're interested in knowing what the other way, personally, I would not have done the mole calculation. I would have just done it as proportion, because we can see that 122 grams reacts with 32 grams. Now, if we say 5 grams, it says, actually says, explain why benzoic acid is the limiting chemical. So it's telling us that that is true. All we need to do is mathematically prove it. So let's put our 5 grams of benzoic acid here. And I'm hoping that you will know from my other videos that I love cross-multiplication from maths. If you've never come across cross-multiplication, it means this times this equals this times this. So that means 5 times 32 equals 122 times x. If you solve for x, x is going to be... So the number of grams of methanol required to react all of that 5 grams is 1.31. So we would need 1.31 grams of methanol to react all your 5 grams of benzoic acid. And oh look, we've got 2.5 grams of the stuff job's done. Personally, I prefer this way here, but that's just me. 
It's just because there's less calculation involved, so I'm less likely to suffer from sausage fingers, which I often do in calculators. And we're done for today, folks. Um, thanks for that. I think the next video will have a tackle of gas volume calculations. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Oh, boy. Amateur error. Forgot to zoom back out again. Do Come on. Be nice. There we go. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed this video, uh, or if you found it useful, consider clicking subscribe. Um, although, let's face it, I'm not making any money at this channel, am I? And even if I did get my thousand subscribers eventually over time, I, th I can't keep the money because it's, uh, it's a commercial. It's a educational Google channel. I'll give it to a charity. We can do that, couldn't we? Run a poll. See which charity should get the money. Thanks for that, folks. Bye-bye.